essentials of a valid contract what are the things that make a contract valid what are the essentials basic requirements of a contract to be valid or legal in the eyes of law so what is a contract that is very simple we have already covered so many times section 2 subsection h of the indian contract act 1872 says an agreement which is enforceable by law is a contract right that is what we understand an agreement which is enforceable by law but other than that there are certain other conditions as well which are very much essentials and now what are those conditions those conditions are mentioned or let down in section 10 so section 10 lays down certain conditions this is the statement given by section 10 which says all agreements are contracts if they are made by the free consent of the parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object and are not hereby expressly declared as void so from this statement we have derived certain points which make essentials of a valid contract what are those essentials this is the only statement and if you just break down the statement we get all our points as essentials what are the conditions what are the uh, basic requirements that we call a contract to make uh, to be valid in the eyes of law so number one it says all agreements are contracts so first things first anything to be qualify as a contract it needs to be an agreement and agreement starts with offer so first things first it requires a proper offer yeah basic things uh, these are certain points which we have derived but uh, yeah offer and acceptance then uh, we are talking about parties competent to contract then there should be a f- uh, free consent of the parties there involves a consideration legal object then they should not be declared as void expressly and then there is something called as uh, intention to create legal obligation and certain legal formalities which are required to be fulfilled fulfilled shall be fulfilled so let's look into all these points one by one so number one says offer and acceptance proper offer and acceptance to be qualify as an agreement it starts with an offer another word for offer is uh, proposal in indian law most of the time it is used as proposal and offer comes from the british law so offer and proposal we are using interchangeably but they mean both one and the same but whatever it is anything to qualify as an offer uh, as a contract first things first sh- there should be an offer if there is no offer there is no starting point offer is the starting point and that offer should be accepted then it becomes a agreement if offer itself is not there then it won't be accepted if nothing is there if nothing is proposed how can it be accepted and if nothing is accepted there is no contract there is no agreement we did not agree upon some anything at all so first things first it starts with a proper offer so there should be an off a uh, proper offer and it should be properly accepted now what is proper offer pro- proper acceptance that we will look in our next chapter where we will be understanding deep down the conditions laid down for offer and acceptance but offer is the starting point and acceptance is something that puts an ignition or puts a, like uh, what we can say uh, something uh, like uh, there is a saying that acceptance is like a matchstick as to the train of gunpowder so imagine offer being a train of gunpowder and by putting the acceptance you are lighting it up that what that is what acceptance does so it starts with an offer and acceptance is something that takes it forward without which we cannot call that there can be a contract there is there is no possibility itself so the starting point is offer and acceptance right now with offer and acceptance again depends upon who are the persons involved in making the offer and accepting the same offer if the offer is made by somebody who is not capable of and who are the persons who are not capable of yes there are persons so how do we know that Pers- people who are of not the age of majority like we are saying that capacity to contract means these are the people who are capable of entering so people who are age of majority means 18 years or above so somebody who is below 18 is not competent to contract so make sure neither your offer nor the acceptance is made by somebody who is below the age of 18 right and are of sane mind sane mind means they are not insane somebody he, who is insane again will not be eligible so insane uh, insane is not allowed but they should be of sane mind that means they should be normal like you and me they can understand things in the normal way then they are eligible to contract enter into a contract they are capable to in, enter into a contract and are not disqualified to contract by any law to which such person is subjected to 
are competent to contract so if for some people if the law specifically says that these people are not eligible to enter into a contract then they are not so there should not be any law as such saying that these people are not eligible so if they satisfy these three conditions yes the people are quite eligible capable to enter into a contract who one who is 18 years of above that means age of majority they are of sane mind and they are not disqualified by any law if these are the conditions people are satisfying then they are very well capable of entering into a contract now if the people who are entering into the contract who are making an offer and acceptance first they have made an offer who, who can make an offer who is eligible but how are they making that is also important if their consent is free or not to make an offer and to accept it if they are doing it by their own free will or not free consent means free will they are not forced by anybody now when do we say that the consent is free consent is said to be free when it is not caused by what these five things what are those five things coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation and mistake yes the last one is mistake so if it is not caused by these five things consent is said to be free if it is caused by these five things it is not free so again the very basic condition is who is making the offer somebody who is eligible how they are making with the free consent and when do we say it is a free consent when it is not caused by either coercion or like neither coercion nor undue influence nor fraud nor misrepresentation even not even mistake if it is caused by any of these the consent would not be free right so again this is very much important that consent should also be free next point says consideration consideration is something called as quid pro quo which means something in return if there is nothing in return at all like if i'm promising to buy your car for what i'm promising that i will buy your car for an amount of rupees 1 lakh if i'm not saying 1 lakh that means why am i buying why would you like if what is the condition Consider, consideration for you consideration for me i am buying the car why am i buying i am getting the car so for me I, like i am obliged to give you some money some money that amount of 1 lakh so i am obliged to give you 1 lakh why am i giving you that 1 lakh because i am getting something in return what is something in return for me that something in return is the car that is the benefit i am getting for you it is the reverse you are obliged if you accept my proposal you are obliged to give me your car because you have agreed that i will buy your i have prom, uh, proposed that i will buy your car and you said yes to it that means you are ready to sell your car so you have to sell your car you have to transfer your car to me but why are you transferring because you are getting something in return in the form of rupees 1 lakh so for you the consideration is 1 lakh for me the consideration is the car both of us are having something in return if there is no consideration involved means that means it would be a charity and if there is no consideration the contract is void without consideration there cannot be a contract there is a popular saying no consideration no contract so a contract requires a consideration without consideration there is not any possibility of any kind of contract right so something in return that is what we are trying to say by consideration every con contract consists of two parts the promise and the consideration for the promise the promise what i have promised to do or what i have promised to perform or the what i have promised to deliver but why why ha i have promised because there is some consideration for that promise i'm not doing it for free if i'm doing it for free then you cannot enforce it in the eyes of uh, law in the uh, court of law because there is no consideration involved i have promised to do something i have promised to give you 1 lakh rupees but why am i promising so it would be just a gift if i'm not getting anything in return right so if it is a gift can you go to the court and say that this person is not giving me a gift gift is something that i'm uh, doing voluntarily and well, that will depend upon my wish if i want to do i will do if i do i don't want to do i won't do right and yes uh, the definition of consideration comes from section 2 subsection d right we have already covered this consideration part but consideration is one very basic element without which contract does not proceed next it is intention to create legal relationship like if i'm saying that i will buy your car i actually mean to buy your car it's not like i'm just saying for the sake of it you and me are sitting free talking doing gossip like sitting together drinking having wine and gossiping about these things that uh, can you buy my car i will buy your car you will sell my car all those things those bullshits we are not considered about we are not concerned about what we are actually concerned about is 
if i'm saying that i will buy your car that means i should actually be intending to buy your car and if you're saying yes to it if you're accepting my proposal you should actually be intending to sell it not for the sake of it so if there is no intention to create any legal relationship to you know go further to perform the promises to de deliver the promises what you have made again it is not a contract because it was just a mere uh, what we can say is as that you know an activity of an idle hour so contracts must not be the sports of an idle hour they should always have something uh, some kind of intention to perform if there is no intention there cannot be an agreement there is a famous case law for balflu versus balflu and we will look into balflu versus balflu when we are looking into the case laws but what it is that in case of ba mr and mrs balflu there was no intention to create a legal relationship it was just a social relationship like mr balflu was supposed to give certain uh, amount of money to mrs balflu which he did not give later mrs balflu uh, went to court and she was like my husband is not giving me money because he has promised to me court was like no the promise was just a promise there was no intention to give it was just promise because he wanted to stay away from you but there was no intention to perform anything and that is a uh, matter of uh, what we call it as social customs or social contracts it is not a legal contract it is not a legal relationship so it does not fall under the purview of uh, indian contract act so uh, like not in the purview of contract act so it was denied why it was denied because there was no intention to create any legal relationship it was just a social relationship right so intention to create legal relationship also matters if there is no intention there is no contract there is no possibility of contract next point that is the object the object must be lawful why are you doing it like if i enter into a contract that i will supply drugs to you now my object is to sell drugs now selling drugs is something that is not lawful and if it is not lawful again you cannot enforce it in the eyes of court so uh, section 10 says consideration and object of the contract should be lawful and is an essential element of a contract now when do we say lawful lawful there is no definition of lawful as such but there are certain things which are defined as unlawful so something that is unlawful will not be considered as lawful so we are saying that it should be lawful but these things if uh, these things are there then it will become unlawful and it will not fall under contract but other than that it is lawful but uh, until and unless something is there so what is unlawful that is defined under section 23 section 23 says something that is forbidden by law if law is saying that is forbidden then that is it is unlawful like in certain states liquor is unlawful liquor is forbidden liquor is banned that means it is forbidden by law it, it becomes unlawful automatically right something that would defeat the provisions of law something like some provision is there in the law and if you do something if your object is to do something that provision would be defeated so something that defeats the provision is again unlawful right and something uh, the purpose of the contract is fraudulent if some fraud is involved definitely it becomes unlawful so it is not something extraordinary that you need to remember but if it is forbidden by law yes unlawful if it defeats the law if if it defeats the certain provisions of the law it is unlawful if it is fraudulent it is unlawful if it causes injury or damage to someone or to someone's property if you are harming somebody like whatever object you have entered if like we enter into a contract to kill somebody or to steal something of somebody or to destroy somebody's property again that is unlawful because if you are killing somebody yes you are trying to ha harm somebody you are giving an injury if you are uh, entering into a contract to like steal somebody's property or destroy somebody's property that is also causing a damage so if something like that is there again it becomes unlawful and something that is immoral or against the public policy if there is a public policy of morality something that is against the society as a large again th there is no definition as such to public policy or im a morality or immorality but something that is against the people in general uh, something against the public policy that also becomes unlawful so if it is unlawful definitely it will be null and void and it will not be considered as contract because being the object being lawful is one of the essential conditions of valid contract right next it is it should not be expressly declared as void there are certain contracts which are expressly declared as void that if you enter into these contracts it is void so if it is void automatically it doesn't uh, remain to be a valid contract because uh, validity and uh, voidity is something different so if something becomes void automatically it doesn't remain valid so there are certain contracts section 26 to section 30 deals with such contracts what are these contracts 
uh, agreement restricting a marriage if you are stopping somebody to getting married marriage is a fundamental right if you are stopping somebody yes it is a void you cannot enter into a contract as such that with which with which you can actually stop somebody to get married you cannot enter into a contract with which you can stop somebody to conduct any trade or profession if you are stopping somebody from entering into trade that is also void some if you are stopping somebody to go further for the legal proceedings that is that is also something void so agreements in restraint of trade marriage and legal proceedings are absolutely void then agreements void due to uncertainty uncertainty means something that is, that you have prom- you have entered into a contract on for something which is dependent upon some uncertain event right like some event on which your contract is dependent now if that event becomes uncertain that event is impossible to perform again uncertainty is involved then also it becomes void and if it is a contract of wager uh, not, like not a contract because it would not be a valid contract it will be always void from the beginning itself so it will just remain an agreement it will never be a contract so if it is an agreement of wager that is also void now what is wager we have all these topics section 26 to 30 we have all these agreements covered very much in detail but for now if these are the agreements yes they will not fall under the uh, uh, valid contract and these are the essentials like you cannot include it right one more point is formalities required by law if law requires you to follow certain formalities for your contract and if you are not following them then it will not remain a valid contract one of the example is indian contract act allows you if the, if the uh, with the contract with where it can be oral or written there is no as such you know mandate that uh, your contract should be written only or should be oral only it can be both it is up to you whether you want to keep it oral or written but certain contracts are there which require to be written certain contracts are there which require to be registered and if something that is required to be in written and your contract is in oral you will not uh, consider it if your contract requires to be registered and duly stamped and if it is not registered or stamped again it will be not called as a valid contract because certain formality is not there so if certain formality is required that should also be there right now let's have a revision what are the essentials uh, this is the chart yes uh, yes this is the definition which says all agreements are contracts if they are made by the free consent of the parties what kind of parties like first it is says all agreements so any kind of agreement which has an offer acceptance made by whom made by the free consent of what of the parties competent to contract the person who is making they should be competent and their consent should be free why for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object if the consideration is also unlawful that will also not, like there should be a consideration and it should be lawful there should be an object and it should be lawful if there is no object There, there there won't be any legal relationship so there should be an object and it should be lawful also and they should not be expressly declared as void now based on this definition based on this statement given by section 10 we come forward with these uh, points as essentials of a valid contract which says offer and acceptance there should be a proper offer it should be made by the parties who are competent to contract with their free consent and there should be a consideration which should be legal there should be an object which should be legal and they uh, they should not be declared expressly add the void and there should be an intention to create legal relationship with certain legal formalities which are required to be fulfilled right with this we are stopping over here thank you